There are over 20,000 publicly traded companies, and over 60% of them are microcaps. And yet, most microcaps, like far too many other public companies, are lulled into a stupor of sorts, believing that they're not required to play by the same rules as other companies, so much so that they practice what I call reverse laissez-faire. That is a syndrome where far too many wait for government to tell them whether what they're doing is wrong, if it is wrong, why it's wrong, and then how they must fix it. It's definitely the case that microcaps have certain exemptions from the rules to which larger public companies must conform. But having the ability to cut corners and actually doing so are two very different things. Perhaps the most singular facet regarding microcaps is that they're a living, breathing contradiction in terms. They've been given more lenient treatment when it comes to the disclosure regime that other public companies must follow. And yet, that very benefit is cited against them on the SEC's website essay, Microcap Stock, a Guide for Investors. If you haven't looked at it, you absolutely should. It criticizes the lack of public information uh, regarding microcap companies and, in addition, the absence of professional stock companies, um, uh, professional stock analysts for most microcap companies. You can revel in the freedom you have, but um, you can't complain if the lack of disclosure obligation is then cited by the government as a strong negative consideration investors should take into account. Of course, one could argue that the lack of professional analysts following many microcap companies, which is cited as a negative factor by the SEC, may mean that there are real potential bargains out there just waiting to be discovered. <clears throat> Microcaps are cited as well as extremely risky. Indeed, the SEC's website states that microcap stocks are among the most risky, citing such factors as that many microcaps are new companies and lack a proven track record. Some are devoid of assets, operations, or revenues. Others have products or services that are still in development or have yet to be tested in the marketplace. And many have very low volume of trades, which may mean that any size trade can have a disproportionate impact on the price of a particular stock. It's ironic in light of those warnings that microcaps have outperformed large cap stocks on a 20-year rolling basis in 59 out of 69 periods. The microcap effect, as it's called, is a proven indicator that if microcap stocks are selected well, investors can avoid the hurt effect that permeates trading in large company cap company stocks. Next. It's important to be like Hugh Hefner or Larry Flint and adopt a policy of full disclosure. Whether or not you're required to make regular public filings, you should assiduously attempt to keep the public informed about what's going on with your company. But remember, too, 
that you can't only disclose the good news. You actually have to disclose all of the news. But if a microcap company makes it a policy regularly to publish releases of truly significant events, whether it's a reporting company or not, it will attract investors and capital because people will have a sense of confidence and those who are investors will want to invest their money. Next, move up to the OTCBB or the OTCQB as quickly as you can. The most important functions any company can perform for its investors is to provide them with clear disclosure and regularized trade reporting. That's a selling point that helps both an entrepreneurial company and its investors. 